Welcome to an introduction to managerial accounting brought to you by Parkbench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. For more information about Parkbench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com. In this short podcast, we are going to show you how to prepare the statement of cash flows using the indirect method. We will take you through each step and explain where the information is extracted from and how to use that information. Why are statements of cash flow important? Cash flow statements can help managers and investors. Managers need to know whether the company can meet its short-term financial obligations. In other words, whether it can pay its bills when they become due. Managers and investors want to know if the company is generating sufficient cash. And investors want to know whether the company is likely to pay cash dividends. To prepare the cash flow statements, we divide or group the cash activities, inflow and outflow of cash, into three areas of activity. These are operating activities, investing activities and financing activities. Operating activities include inflows such as cash received from sales as interest and from any dividend income. The cash outflows include purchases, expenses, any taxes paid and interest paid on loans. Cash inflows from investing activities include sales of plant, property and equipment and any sale of land. Cash outflows for investment include cash paid to buy land, property, plant, equipment or other businesses. Cash inflows from financing activities include sale of bonds, inflows from a line of credit, and cash generated by the issue of common stock. Cash outflows include cash paid out as dividends, and cash used to retire long-term debt. The information that we need to prepare the cash flow statement comes from financial statements. The income statement is one source of information. We shall also need the balance sheets for the last two years because we are going to use information which is calculated using the starting and ending balances in a number of accounts. The difference in the preparation of a cash flow statement by the indirect method comes about through a different way of determining the net cash inflow or outflow from operating activities. The first figure that we require is that for net income. This figure is obtained from the income statement for Barbar Wool and Company and is $81,375. We enter this figure to the statement of cash flow. The next figure we shall require is that for depreciation. This figure will be added back to the cash flow statement. The figure for depreciation expense is obtained from the income statement. We are going to add back $17,000. Remember there was no actual cash payment made for this expense, which is why we are adding it back. Having added the $17,000, we now look for any figures that relate to the sale of equipment. A loss of $2,500 is shown on the income statement and we will add this back. So we enter a figure of $2,500 to our cash flow statement. Now we look for any change in receivables. To determine the change in receivables we need the figures from the balance sheets for the two previous years. Receivables have increased from $29,800 to $62,000. This represents a change of $32,200. Since there has been an increase in monies not collected from customers, we need to subtract this amount. We will now look at inventory. Again, we obtain figures from the balance sheets. Inventory has decreased from $14,700 to $4,700. This represents goods that have been sold from inventory. 
we need to add back in a decrease in inventory. If inventory had increased, we should have needed to subtract it. Now we look for any changes in prepaid insurance. Using the balance sheets, we see that the prepaid insurance has decreased from $1,700 to $1,400. We are going to add this figure back. Next, we look for changes in accounts payable. Accounts payable have increased from $14,500 to $17,600. This represents an increase in cash owed. Or put another way, we have not paid the sum out as cash. The difference of $3,100 is to be added back in. Now we look for any changes in accrued wages. Accrued wages have increased from $5,900 to $6,500. This change of $600 represents wages not paid out, so we add this figure back in. Finally, we look for taxes payable. The balance sheet shows the taxes payable have increased from $11,000 to $12,500. We add back the sum of $1,500. We can now calculate the net cash from operating activities. This gives us a figure of $84,175 as the net cash from operating activities. We can now turn to the figures for preparation of the sections relating to investing and financing activities. Note that these are the same for both the direct and indirect methods. The notes to the accounts tell us that a loom was sold during the year. The original cost of the loom was $10,000. We can next determine the accumulated depreciation that related to this sale. The difference between the accumulated depreciation at the start and end of the year can be obtained from the balance sheets and the depreciation expense from the income ex statement. The difference between start and end of year is determined. Subtract the depreciation expense and we have a figure for accumulated depreciation relating to the sale. We know from the income statement that there was a loss on the sale of the loom for $2,500. We now have sufficient information to determine the cash received for the sale of the loom. The original cost of the loom was $10,000. If the accumulated depreciation was $2,000, the loom had a book value of $8,000. Subtract the loss on sale from this figure, then we know the cash received for the machine was $5,500. This gives us our first figure for the cash received from investing activities. To determine the value of equipment purchased, we take the value of the equipment at the start of the year, subtract the value for the sale of the loom, and then subtract this from the value at the end of the year. This will give us the figure for the cash paid for equipment purchased. This gives us a figure of $36,000 for the purchase of equipment. The sale of equipment less the purchase of equipment gives a figure of $30,500 as a cash outflow for investing activities. Finally, we look at financing activity. The balance sheet tells us that long-term debt was reduced from $100,000 to $60,000. So a reduction of long-term debt of $40,000 was made as a financing activity during the year. To determine dividends paid, we look at the change in retained earnings at the start and end of the year, subtract this from the net income, and the remainder is the cash payment made as a dividend. We now have a figure of $91,375 for financing activities. This is a cash outflow. The three sections can now be combined to give a cash flow statement. 
There is an inflow of cash from operating activity and we subtract the two outflows. The result is a net decrease in cash of $37,700 during the year. We can carry out a simple check here. The difference of $37,700 must represent the change in the current asset of cash during the year. From the balance sheet we see that there has been a decrease in cash. Subtract $20,300 from $58,000 and we have a figure of $37,700 which agrees to the cash flow statement. This ends our podcast on preparation of a cash flow statement by the indirect method. Brought to you by Park Bench Tutors and narrated by David Hopcroft. Thank you for watching and for listening. We wish you success in your studies. For more information about Park Bench Tutors, please visit parkbenchtutors.com.